It's 4 o'clock on a Tuesday, and you know what that means, don't you? It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi's Quarantini Happy Hour. Woohoo! <laughs> we are live, world. How are you? Welcome to the Quarantini Happy Hour, and let's welcome back our very special guest, Mr. Colin Weeb. He joined us yesterday for what was a complete video meltdown disaster, for which I am very embarrassed. He was very patient, and you guys in the audience were very patient. But uh, Colin is the president and CEO of SessionWire.com, or SessionWire, which you can find at SessionWire.com. Uh, he and I first met in 1998 when he played live on stage with Randy Bachman at the Taxi Road Rally when Randy was our first ever Lifetime Achievement Award recipient. Um, let's see, Colin is a taxi member like most of you, and I was recently reintroduced to him by another taxi member named Bill Threlkeld. Thank you, Bill. Um, and I'm excited to say that SessionWire, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute, and we're going to spend the whole hour on it, is very, very cool. Something that many, many, many taxi members um, can certainly use. And uh, I'm excited that they're going to be a sponsor of the Road Rally this year because you guys know how I get all lit up when I find a sponsor that has something that our members actually really want and need and can use fruitfully. Um, what else can I tell you about him? Uh, I'm scanning because he told me yesterday's bio <laughs> was a little long. He's had five nationally released CDs and a live DVD. He's best known for singing and playing with Canadian legend and a true legend at that, Mr. Randy Bachman of the Guess Who and Bachman Turner Overdrive. Colin played with him for two decades. Um, highlights included playing the Orange Bowl, the Orange Bowl Parade, Governor General's Award Show on CBC for Neil Young's induction, uh, concert uh, and TV appearances in Europe, the opening of Tin Pan South in Nashville with Delbert McClinton, Michael McDonald, and Jimmy Webb. Uh, he's played many classic rock shows with the likes of Alice Cooper, Three Dog Night, the Doobie Brothers, the Little River Band, and many more. Um, so all that to say that Colin is a musician. He's one of you, but we know him best today as the CEO of Session Wire. So, Colin, welcome back. I'm surprised you wanted to come back after yesterday's video was so horrendously bad. <laughs> oh, we had to uh, had to redeem yesterday's show and come back fresh. And <laughs> there you the go. Lighting a little bit to see if that would help, but uh, that was some pretty pixelated weirdness yesterday and. And I know you've been working with the Wirecast people today, uh, trying to figure All day. out what those issues are. But uh, it's good to know that both your connection and my connection, we're both on the internet, where our speed uploads and downloads are just what they're supposed to be. So whatever yeah. you folks are, are seeing out there is, is uh, welcome to the internet. That's just what happens sometimes. But just a, a, thrill, a thrill to be here and uh, glad to be with you. Some people are saying that your volume could come up a little bit, Colin. So if you can boost your input a little bit or the output from your mixer. Certainly. How's that? I think that's good. A little bit better? Yeah. Let, guys in the chat room, let me know if that's a good level comparable to mine. I got enough musicians listen to me out there. that. Uh, um, but anyway, I'm peeking here in my Apollo twin. So. Yeah, everybody uh, says uh, much better, thanks. All right, okay, we have good. we have consensus. You sound like a radio guy and your level is good. Um, all right, so before you guys start with the questions, first thing I wanna do again is play you the video that I played yesterday because it tells a good chunk of the story and gives you a good feel. And then we're gonna spend the whole rest of the hour with you guys asking Colin questions about Session Wire. And if for some reason, because the guys at Wirecast really couldn't figure out what the problem was, sadly, um, and we've had their A-team on it all day trying to figure it out. So if the video goes in the crapper again, uh, we will revert to me calling Colin on the phone and jacking him into my um, roadcaster and we'll just do it audio or audio wise because I want you guys to hear all about this. So here we go. Let's play the video and then we'll be right back with you uh, for a lot of Q&A. And here it comes. Remote recording is the new normal. Engineers, producers and teachers can record studio quality audio anywhere around the world. How cool is that? It's all possible using the world's best remote recording platform, SessionWire. Let's see how it works. All right, here we go. Don't worry if you're not technical. It's super easy. Hey. 
We're watching Brendan and Ross record music together live from opposite sides of the country. They're tracking studio quality audio directly to their recording software. SessionWire works with all popular audio workstations. Our unique peer-to-peer -peer studio quality audio can be recorded live into your workstation with our new plugins and upgraded talkback system. You can drag and drop files back and forth with bank grade security. It's like being behind the glass in a professional recording studio. Only you can be anywhere in the world. Session wire, wherever you are. Hey, Brandon, thanks for connecting. I'm just wondering if you could walk me through how you've got your session wire set up. For sure, I could. Uh, which DAW are you using? Uh, I'm using Pro Tools, but I also use Logic and Ableton. No problem. It'll work with all of those. It'll work with any DAW. I have a Pro Tools session open, so we'll check it out here first. I'm going to drop cool. the Session Wire Send plugin on my master bus. It's got a trim knob and a bypass function. I'm going to play some audio, and you can tell me if you can hear it. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. That sounds like I'm right there with you. Can you tell me a bit about the audio fidelity? Uh, the bit depth is 32-bit float, and the bit rate is 48 kilohertz. What do I need to do to get my talkback set up? To get talkback set up, you create a mono aux channel and drop in the new SessionWire talkback plugin. And as you can see, my meter is working on my side. It's got trim knobs for both send and receive, and an auto-mute function. So when you play audio or record audio in your DAW, it'll mute the talkback. How are you going to record the audio that I'm sending you? Well, I've created an aux channel here that I can uh, route to the input of another audio channel, and all I'm going to do is drop in the Session Wire Receive plugin. And it's got a trim knob and a bypass, so I can adjust what I'm hearing from you on that channel. Wow. So what if I wanted to send you a take like uh, something I already worked on last night. Real simple, you would navigate to that file in your finder and drag it onto my face. Cool, and if I wanted to just play it from my DAW, I would just I would just hit play and, and make sure that it's routed to you and it streams right into your session? Correct. Amazing. Session Wire, wherever you are. <laughs> The crowd loved it. <laughs> All right, now we're ready for questions, and the video is still looking good on your end, so yay on that. All right, you guys, if you're going to ask... A shout out to uh, Brendan and Ross, who were in that video. Um, both of those guys are manning the chat in YouTube right now, and they're answering some questions in real time as well. So uh, you've, you've got all the pros sitting here waiting to help you out, so... That's pretty awesome. cool. Now you've got I, a face to your chat names. I, I think it was funny. I did have a moment, Brendan, I'm going to apologize in advance for this, but you sounded so California when, uh, or so L.A., uh, you went for sure or something in the video, and I cracked up. I thought, no, he's from Canada. But uh, anyway, good job on that video. I really, uh, very nicely done video. It felt comfortable and real, not silly, but very informative. So... Uh, Anyway, well, here I, we go. I think it's good to know that Session Wire was created by musicians for musicians. And uh, along with that comes songwriters for songwriters. It's something that um, we all urgently needed for ourselves. And so that was important. Great. Well, you can tell that it was built by musicians for musicians just by the layout and the ease of use and all that. So anybody who has a question, please type the word question in all caps before it so I can easily identify you in the chat room and relay your question. Um, there's a you know a little delay, so they should start coming in any second. Um, by the way, I know that you guys mentioned uh, that a lot of people are you. Oh, yesterday, by the way, we crossed the line of 10,000 users, which we're That's very, right. very thrilled to be a part of that. Um, and one of our viewers won uh, a full-blown uh, year-long license, if I remember correctly. That's um, correct. And we have that user's name, so we'll reveal it a bit later. All right. Thank you for that. I'd and like to know how many people that are on today were on yesterday and if we have new people. 
Yeah, if you were on yesterday, give us a plus one. If you are new to the show today, give us a plus two in the chat room. Um, Marion Laird asked the question, do I have to download the software in order to use it to collaborate? Uh, also, do I have to use a webcam? The answer is yes. You need to download the app and uh, it connects very simple, very similar to Zoom. And uh, you need a, a webcam or on your laptop, your, your laptop camera. I'm using a, a Logitech. They're very inexpensive, but just like you would set up for any other video conferencing is, is the simple tools that you would need. Uh, Greg Carroza wants to know, in addition to audio, can I also share my screen so we can both go over mixing stuff? Yes, you can share your screen and it can blow it up to be high resolution. I know guys that are using TVs in their control room to put the, you know, the waveforms and whatnot up onto their screen. So the answer is yes, and that's a really good question. And I'd like to remind uh, people too that the creator plan, if you go to sessionwire.com and just hit join, you get the share screen and a lot of these features for free. It's called the creator plan and you can have video chat, you can have the encrypted um, file transfer so you wouldn't need Dropbox, you wouldn't need WeTransfer or any some of the file sharing sites. You can actually <laughs> just do what they did in the video and we call it the session wire face drag. You just uh, take, take the uh, file, drag it over to your friend's face and uh, it's peer to peer so it, it's connected. It doesn't even bounce up to the internet. It's important yes. to note that some of the record labels out there are really, you know, fearful about content getting released before its time. So they told us in no uncertain terms that this had to be bank grade secure for them to be trading files back and forth. And it is. And that's included in the free plan. So our goal is to get as many creators and uh, singers, songwriters, musicians, guitar teachers, people to be part of the session wire community and use the creator plan for free. Uh, if you want to use the high quality audio and the plugins, like you saw in the video, we have simple options like a day pass, which we call the session pass. You can get three days for like seven bucks. Um, and I know some people like myself, I don't record every day. I don't have a, a functioning studio that I rent out to other people. So when I need the high quality audio, I can just get a, a three day pass, use it and then I'm back on the creator plan uh, to still be able to communicate, to be able to write songs back and forth together and to share files. So uh, it's, it's, it's really a unique system that way. Well, I know a guy, I can get you a really steep discount on a plan. <laughs> uh, somebody mentioned in the chat room, they said your, your volume is still kind of low. Wow. So yeah, um, anyway, while you're checking that out, uh, I'm looking for the next question, which I just saw one in here somewhere. Okay, here's one from Kip Johnson. So you said yesterday that one end does not have to have a DAW. One, two, is that better, the uh, volume? Uh, I'm gonna have to ask those guys to let us know because you sound fine to me. Testing uh, one, two, I'm getting some distortion here now, so maybe- Not getting any over here. I just put a uh, Neve 1073 on my voice, so that might help. There you go. Um, talk to me for a second. I want to see your levels. One, two, checking one, two. And this is a Heil PR40, and there, you're supposed to you know, talk right into it. It's a radio mic. You are but, still uh, looking a little low. Uh, just uh, by looking at the meter here, you're like about 40% lower than me. Okay. Well, maybe I should switch to the same earbuds you have maybe in the middle. I don't know. Um, no, because I'm not using my earbuds. I'm just listening. Um, I'm using an Audio-Technica USB mic. Uh, but I'm not hearing any of the distortion. I think you could jack it up a little bit. And if there is distortion, we'll just blame it on Wirecast. <laughs> okay. guys are texting me now about my volume and they say it sounds okay for them for them oh really maybe it's just one of our guys in the chat room is just has old ears like me and he can't hear anything take that peter <laughs> uh, or put a, both your earbuds in peter <laughs> anyway okay going back to uh 
Kip Johnson's question. So you said yesterday that one end does not have to have a dog, but I did not hear how the person without a dog gets it to work on his end. Okay. Um, let me see if I can think through that question. So there's a person on one end with a DAW and a person on the other end. What we have is what we call session view, and it's very, very similar to a Zoom link. So the person, the artist uh, on the that has the plan would actually just send a link to that person at the other end, just like you would send a Zoom link or like we did here with Wirecast, and they would connect from a browser and they would be able to hear the high quality audio right from their own browser without a DAW. Okay. Um, and Andre Stepanian asks, uh, can you also save the visual or the video of the musicians playing within the app? Um, that's coming in a future release. Uh, we will have the recording feature, but right now, because it's a peer-to-peer -peer situation, we are not storing any information anywhere at this particular time. Uh, you would be storing it directly to your own hard drive. So that's coming. Everybody's asked. I want the recording feature as well. So that's that's in a future release, which is not that far away. Um, let's see. Recording with regards to no DAW. Uh, the mix reviews is a typical workflow. So if you and I are, are experiencing a mix together, um, there's a typical setup and one can have session wire installed and open and the other would have a DAW to stream to them as well. So there's a couple of different workflows. And I think if you go to the website, um, you can find some examples of that. And we have some guys that are doing mix reviews from New York all the way to like Russia right now. And it's really interesting because, you know, sometimes you want to have people in the room with you at the final stages of the mix. And we talked about this yesterday with, you know, Bill Simsick and, and whatnot, the way that he worked. You might want to tell that story again. But it's very, very similar to having people come into the control room when you're at the final stages and uh, you, you are listening to your mix and you want people to comment on it or you know maybe the whole band is in there and it's kind of like the couch at the back of the control room so you can play the high quality audio to everybody that's in your session view so uh, we wanted to make it as much like a um, you know professional recording studio environment as possible uh, as possible as you can get remotely and I, I was very intrigued by the fact that it's the latency is so low, but latency, I didn't realize that in a peer-to-peer -peer situation, which means that it's not going out to a server, that it's basically going from point A to point B, and I'll never be able to wrap my head around that electronically, but um, that the latency is very, very low, but can be affected by distance. So if you've got somebody in London that is trying to jam in real time with somebody in Los Angeles, the latency might be noticeable there because of the physical distance. And it, you know, travels the, the audio essentially is, you know, electrons traveling at the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles per second. But that adds up when you're going from London to Los Angeles. So uh, is it safe to say that the latency would be very minimal, maybe even not noticeable if you had like four or five band members all in the same town that because of a pandemic or something, couldn't get together for rehearsals and wanted to rehearse live. Might the latency be low enough when they're in close proximity that they could do a live jam or no? Well, it would be the same as as uh, any other kind of, whether you were doing it on uh, FaceTime or Skype or, or Zoom or anything like that. I mean, the internet is what the internet is and you know you can't beat the speed of light. What session wire is designed for is not necessarily to have people jamming together, although you can, but it's when you're actually going to record together, which is different. So mm -hmm. you saw on the video prior to uh, the start of the show, uh, both Brendan, he was in Edmonton and Ross in Toronto, and they did a couple of different workflows. If you noticed, they were kind of jamming and playing together, but at the same time, Brendan was tracking drums and then he could send the files to Ross or Ross could just listen to them or Ross could play the track along with the drums while Brendan is listening. 
and then face drag the track so he can put it into the session. So it's all really, we have to think more in terms of workflow as opposed to trying to recreate and, and uh, go against physics, um, which is latency. And it's not just the latency, it's what we are experiencing right now on Wirecast. Both of us have really solid connections. Both of us are plugged in Ethernet, but for some reason, I'm like a second and a half delay in my video from what I'm hearing. Right. So it's it's an internet issue, and it has nothing to do with the application. Um, all these types of applications, whether it's Session Wire or Zoom or Wirecast, there's going to be a problem with internet levels. But the one thing that the new Session Wire 2.0 has is it will actually show you a little meter and tell you where you're at. Hmm. And it will um, ask you to step down uh, your amount of bandwidth that you have to make sure that you stay connected on the call. So this is really interesting and I'm not obviously not a tech guy to the degree where I can explain this properly. We've got a bunch of of our tech people in the chat that can explain this perfectly. So I might let them just put in a blurb. So if you want to read that, they can give you the real specs on it. But I think the truth is for a singer songwriter and for most musicians and taxi members, um, the goal here is to get the human connection back into songwriting. Uh, collaboration is so important. And whether we're talking about co-writers or songwriting camps or even, you know, debuting songs, we know that there's some very large record companies that are using session wire to audition new artists. So they get into the session view. There's a few different people. And then the artist actually performs their, their music for the, the top brass and they get the high quality feed directly into their headphones. Uh, and it's a much better environment for them to actually, you know, look for and sign new artists. So it's being used at the highest level of the industry. So I think your members, uh, once they get used to adjusting workflows, are gonna find it extremely valuable. Yeah, I remember having dinner one night. Uh, a very, very close friend of mine is a really big mixer, producer, engineer, mixer guy. And uh, we were out to dinner and he with our wives and he said, I've got to go. And we do, I don't even think the salads had gotten there yet. And I said, why? He said, I just got back 132 different notes, things that I have to fix on a mix. Um, it was somebody really big that he was working with that I, he would be pissed if I mentioned the name, but somebody huge, you know, like a, a multi-generational, multi-platinum artist, 132 notes. So if, if he had session wire back then, um, he, he could have been playing this stuff, high quality audio for the client on the other end. And they could have said, yep, that, that volume is great on the vocal and the bridge onto the next one, rather than making all the moves, sending the track, in, you know, Dropbox, waiting for more notes to come back, sending it back in Dropbox again, just the time saver alone has got to be great. And I would imagine the same would be true for our members that are collaborating when one member needs a, another member to put a sax solo on something or try a vocal on something. To be able to work like you're in the same room versus sending files back and forth just got to be better. You know, and we've all experienced that experience of sending files back and forth, but you make a really good point, Michael, that you also have to get these notes back and you start to listen and go, well, you know, bar four, there's this little, I don't know, it's out of tune. Was that a major or a minor? And I don't really know how to articulate that or explain it. And these things take time and, and it's just, it's really, really difficult to communicate yeah. that. And so you could pick up the phone and try and explain that. But if you are actually in the room and they've got the mix up on the console and you're listening to the high quality audio, you yep. can say directly to the engineer or the mix engineer um, that, you know, on track 14, pull that down, solo that for me. I want to hear what that is. They go, yeah. oh, that was my dog at the door. I didn't even know that was on there. You know, things <laughs> like things like that, they just happen and you, you suddenly hear things. So it's, it's great to be in the same room. It's almost like you're sitting beside someone. We talked about Randy Bachman earlier. He's doing a new record. Um, with his son, and yeah. I don't give any of that away at the moment, but uh, they're getting ready to mix, and they will be using Session Wire because 
his engineer is in Europe doing something and they're not going to be able to physically fly back and forth to to do this. So this is a really good opportunity for us to hopefully we can capture this on video for the uh, the road rally, which we should also mention. We're going to do some how to's yep. at the road rally. We're actually going to set up and show you how to go step by step using session wire in your production workflow for a number of different workflows. I think it's so important for people to, you know, get it in their mind what they want to do and then find the technology and use it to the best of their ability to get the outcome that they're looking for. I don't want to play with all this tech stuff. I just want to make the music and make sure that the guitar player that I'm working with is playing the right chords. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's not unlike somebody sitting out, sitting down at their DAW and not knowing, not being familiar with what the best sounds in their library of sounds are for them. So every time they sit down to do a recording, they spend more time searching for sounds than they do being creative. Um, and, and the same thing, minimizing the tech involvement so that you can actually spend your time on creativity. And that's that's what's so great about, you know, the human connection. And I think we all can agree that after this year of lockdowns and pandemics and things like that, uh, we've had to adapt um, in not only studios, but people that, you know, I used to play live a lot. I haven't had a live gig for a year and a half. Wow. And uh, I have one this weekend. So that's a good thing. But, you know, it's starting to come back. But we all have we've relied on some of these tools and technologies. And I'm just sorry that Session Wire wasn't more readily available for everybody sooner. Uh, it's We just have to, you know, rely on people like you, Michael, to get the word out to the community that this tool is available and it's free to get started. And uh, it, it's really simple for you to, to work into your workflow if you know what you want to achieve. Like you said, if you want a saxophone uh, solo, um, you just go to the Discover tab in Session Wire and you look for people that play saxophone and you send them a connection request. And uh, if they connect with you, then, you know, you can have a dialogue just like we are now. And, uh, you know, pretty soon if you just hit record, you could be recording the saxophone that very same day, that very same hour. Um, it's just that simple. So. It's uh, one of those things that I think that is going to start to grow uh, within your community, within our community. And as we get more and more people uh, showing other people and, and working together, um, it's, it's going to you know, result in a lot more creativity, a lot more songwriting, a lot more collaboration from people all over the world. I have this one quick story. Yeah. Um, I, I, wanted a, I had a song about angels. And I wanted to have a harp. Now, I have great keyboards. I have, you know, tons of sounds and libraries, and I have harp sounds. But I thought, I want that sound of a big harp. You know, when somebody pulls the string, you can just feel the fingers and hear the room. So I looked around, and I found a guy in, um, I think it was uh, Bulgaria. Wow. Wow. It was somewhere over in Europe. I, I think it was Bulgaria. And uh, we connected, and he did. He played harp on this angel song that I had. And it was so cool. I didn't need more than, I don't know, I think it was a 10 or 15-minute session because it was only for the chorus. I, I just wanted these glisses. And he, he did that, and it was it was beautiful. So the whole world is is wide open to us to be able to create in ways that we never thought we could create before. Isn't and right exciting? after the session, he sat down at the dinner table and said to his family, I'm famous in America. Or, yeah, Canada. <laughs> or Canada, yeah, sorry. <laughs> North America, there we go. There you go. Um, all right. Uh, I'm looking for other questions. I think your guys fielded one while you were talking. Um, Well, we should. Well, I guess everybody can see it in the chat room anyway. So, all right, a couple more questions if you guys have them. Yeah, our guys are in the chat room and they're taking all the technical questions. And and uh, what what I want to do with you, Michael, is just talk directly to taxi members because, you know, I've been a taxi member. I understand the whole process. Uh, I know you know go back to the days of wrapping the cassette tapes like a burrito and mailing them in. 
And I've had yep. some for- forwards and, you know, I've had some rejections like we all have. Uh, but I think, you know, taxi is a, a wonderful way of, of, you know, keeping our inspiration and our, our energy because we have this opportunity to continue to produce and to create. And the idea of having people there to help and collaborate with you is, is something that I think is we're, we're going to discover, you know, over the next few months, years, uh, how this can change people's lives. And I'll, I'll say one other thing, too. The, um, we, we've just launched an affiliate program, and uh, one of our goals is to allow musicians to get an income or receive um, commissions for uh, yearly sales. So if, if they refer somebody and they sign up and buy an annual membership, they get a 30% commission on that. And we did that specifically because a lot of the you know, younger musicians are used to those YouTube influencer um, right. videos and they go click the description in the link below. And so they would always say, hey, do you have an affiliate program so that we can put our link in there and get a little something for this for, you know, making videos? And uh, we said, sure. I mean, our goal is to empower musicians and artists and not to put up roadblocks. So that's uh, it's not something that... We're, we're trying to promote heavily, but it's there if, if people want to, to use those links and, and earn some extra income. Do you know that um, slightly more than half of all of Taxi's members now come by word of referrals from friends? That didn't happen. Ten years ago, we'd get maybe 5 or 10% referrals, <clears throat> but now more than half. Um, it, it's actually superseding like Google ads uh, and, and things like that. So over time, it's like compound interest at the bank, that if you have 10 happy people, then they each turn a couple of friends on. It just keeps growing geometrically to the point where it becomes a thing. And and that's a result. And I'm sure you guys will experience the same thing. When you have happy customers, they want to share it. Although I have a theory about taxi members. People always say, how many members do you have before they join? Because they want to know if there's competition. So I've always worried that nobody would ever refer a friend to taxi because they wouldn't want competition. But as it turns out, I think people have figured out that, well, I do, you know, classic rock and this guy's a jazz player. So no competition there. Um, You got to tell us at least one good Randy Bachman story, something that he wouldn't be pissed off about you sharing publicly, because I know he's kind of a private guy. Um, Yesterday, we touched on his work ethic uh, and just the fact that he's a really solid guy. Can you elaborate uh, more about that? And we'll go to John Hope's question right at, oh, I see a couple of questions in there. You know what? Let's grab the questions while they're sitting here, and then we'll go on to the Randy story. So Kip Johnson's got a question. Do you have a text-based bulletin board inside Session Wire? Uh, that kind of works like Google Docs, where the text is shared and editable and viewed amongst all parties. Um, not in that uh, respect. Uh, what we have coming is a, a chat similar to the way that people use Slack. Um, but, you know, most people with their Google Docs, they just use Google Docs. Uh, session wire is really about connecting with video and connecting with that human connection and you know you can drag and drop files so if you want to drag some lyrics or some chord charts you just simply do the session wire face drag and you know people can just download it right from their interface it'll just end up in whatever folder that you want it to Um, Uh, i mentioned the affiliate program and some people are going to affiliate.sessionwire.com it's just in the works it's it's built but it's not actually, I mean, if somebody really wants to be an affiliate tomorrow, we can set them up with a, with a code. Um, okay. Uh, yes, coming soon, chat groups, rooms, scheduled sessions, all these things are coming in a future version. And so SessionWire, I, I think I'd like to tell the group that SessionWire 2.0 has just launched. Uh, the older version of SessionWire was a Mac only version and so a lot of people wanted a windows version so we worked really hard on two things number one making it available for windows users and also the plugins to be able to send high quality audio uh, through your DAWs now you can have the two 
streams. You can have our voice stream back and forth and you can have the high quality audio. So I think it's really important to make that differentiate that, um, that distinction between those two things. And once again, uh, the features that are coming are going to knock your socks off. So I would suggest that you set up at least your free creator account. It's not going to cost you anything and keep an eye on your email because the new, new features are going to be rolled out very, very quickly over the next months, weeks, months, and probably into next year, it's going to be very robust and probably the price will go up quite a bit too. But we want to grandfather people in at this level because like like taxi did you know it's we we want to have happy um customers we want people to be using the product and we want to take those barriers down so that people can do what they do best and that's create and write songs and collaborate together uh, you know it's i think it was elon musk or gary vaynerchuk that said uh uh, a sure sign of a company doing well is people asking more for more features because it means your user base has grown big enough that people are talking about it, thinking about it, and requesting. So if you're at that stage where you're getting all kinds of requests for features, that's a good sign. Uh, one more question here. Uh, this one's from John Hope. He wants to know, can multiple tracks be done across session wire as in, say, eight drum tracks? Well, I think you <clears throat> should go to... Uh, sessionwire.com and go where their videos are and there's a wonderful tutorial there that Brendan's done where he's shown exactly how to do what you're asking and uh, we as a matter of fact a lot of the early adopters of Sessionwire have been drummers and uh, Brendan who's in the chat right now is actually a drummer you saw him on the video and drummers are setting up their drum rooms with multiple cameras and they're using session wire to deliver tracks all over the world and uh, you know multi-channel streaming is coming very soon we've partnered with a really great um, multi-channel company out of Los Angeles and those news items will come out soon uh, there's a lot of talk about Atmos and 7.1 and multi-channel so these are all things that are on the session wire roadmap wow. um, I don't want to say anything out of out of line but uh, the point is is that all of these things and you said it yourself Michael you know when people start asking for features you know that your people are using it and yep. uh, I'm like that I want the record function sooner than later because that's what I like to do I like to record my songwriting sessions so I can always go back and what happened oh that was cool we're starting to get some pixelation on your shirt. And while it's a great fashion statement, it whoop, just went away. Yay. Uh, good, because I don't want to lose you again. The video has been pretty stable today, which I'm appreciative. Thank you, Wirecast. Um, let me scroll down. I saw another question. Somebody I wondered. said, can you drag a track from Logic on a Mac to a Windows DAW? And the answer is yes. Um, it's all cross-compatible. Just drag your MP3 or your WAV file and do the session wire face drag and the person on the other end will get your file. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. Uh, well, you guys grab that one. Uh, okay. Uh, I've tracked drums many times remotely. The tracks are recorded locally, remotely, and the producer produces locally. Anyone who would like to connect of oh, that's from Kevin. Uh, I'll tell the uh, Randy Backman story that I told yeah, you yesterday. So, yeah, um, please do. Just because I, I think it's a really good story to internalize because I know some of us feel this way. And yesterday it was kind of pixelated and maybe it didn't come across. But um, it was more about Randy's work ethic as a songwriter. And we were, we were touring. We were on tour with 38 Special and Blue Oyster Cult. And we were staying in this Holiday Inn in... in I think it was Minnesota somewhere where it was snowy outside and we had a day off and Randy came to my room and he knocked on the door and he said, Hey, you busy? I said, what's going on? And he brought in this huge bag and box full of cassette tapes and all these envelopes. And he said, I want you to help address and, and put tapes into these envelopes. 
So there was a lot of them there, including probably some to taxi as well. We were making burritos and putting in all these different cassette tapes. And I remember picking up one and this thought went through my mind. It was, it was addressed to Brian Setzer from the Stray Cats. And I was a Brian Setzer fan. I have his records and, and I just, I think, you know, he's got so much material that he's written himself. Plus he's got, you know, 60s and 50s songs that haven't been re-recorded for years. There's so much material out there. Why would he want one of Randy's songs? It was a song <laughs> called Can't Go Back to Memphis, and it was kind of a upside down, shaken all over, and um, just my doubt just welled up inside of me, and I thought, there's no way. I mean, this this will be returned to sender before you know it. That's what was going through in my <laughs> mind. Well, fast forward a few months later, we're in Florida, and uh, we stopped for lunch, and there was a Sam Goody uh, record store there. And Randy came on to the tour bus just as we were about to leave, and he was swinging the Sam Goody bag. And I was sitting in the front lounge of the tour bus, and he threw the bag on my lap, and he said, check it out. So I opened it up, and it was a new CD. And he said, look at the back. So I turned it over, and can't go back to Memphis, Randy Backman. The brand new album was Stray Cats, Choo Choo Hot Fish. And it was at that moment that I had this, you know, lightning bolt, this epiphany yeah. that said, you know, if you don't put your songs out there, they're not going to get recorded or they're not going to get heard. I think you mentioned yesterday, what was your quote about Gretzky? Oh, if you don't take the shot, you can't make the goal. That's right. Randy Bachman is maybe the greatest living example of that work ethic that I've met in 45 years or something in the industry. I, it, it's funny. Randy is a pretty humble, pretty normal guy. Does he like it when somebody says, wow, you're Randy Bachman of, of BTO and the Guess Who? Absolutely. He, he enjoys that people have appreciated his music. Not a jerk about it at all. But... What the, the part of him they don't see is that guy who's constantly making writing appointments, doing them in every city he can, um, and, and he lives his life for, for writing better songs. And, and yesterday, I'm going to read this again. I got this email from Randy in 1998 after he came to his first road rally, and he sent this to me. Just thought I'd drop you a note and thank you for the great taxi weekend. I learned much more than I anticipated, and I'm spending the next few weeks slicing and dicing my songs, making stronger opening lines, trimming solos. No, don't trim solos. <laughs> Not when there's Randy playing. Um, creating better titles and get her, getting better singers to do my vocals. <laughs> and there he is. Um, I'd like to thank all the great people I met over the weekend for their compliments and conversations and hope to see everybody at the next rally. Happy trails from Randy. So... It just goes to show, here's a guy who had like 25 hit records. Everybody in the world knows some of his more iconic songs, like, you know, American Woman, Taking Care of Business. I mean, these are global hits in probably every language imaginable. But what does he do at night? He works on making better opening lines, trimming solos, creating better titles. You would think that would be somebody in year number one or two of their songwriting. Randy's been doing it for 50 years, and he still knows what he needs to constantly work on because his desire to get cuts is that strong. Well, and it's because it's what he does. I mean, he produced my album, my second album, <clears throat> and uh, we had a lot of fun writing songs together. So I've actually sat down and written quite a few songs with Randy, and our process is, is pretty similar to what most people would do. However, there's, there's just this air of professionality that when you've actually worked and written songs with other people, you have this push-pull kind of environment, and it's like, oh, I want to do this, and you want to do this, but the collective is always better, and somehow it just turns out better after the fact when you have, you know, the mastermind, the brain trust, more people, yeah. not more people, but two people that are really passionate about something. And uh, writing songs w with Randy was always fun because, you know, he comes up with some really great grooves and feels that, that uh, you know, would inspire me to sing something different or play a different chord. And, um, you know, you mentioned some of the big hits. 
when we toured in Europe, the big song over there was Ain't Seen Nothing Yet. In Canada, in the U.S., it's always taking care of business. That's the big encore song. But I yeah. guess there was some disco band over in Europe that, that made Ain't Seen Nothing Yet famous. So that was that was the big song. And we I remember playing in Sweden once, and we started playing one of the Guess Who songs. And, of course, they were all there, VTO, VTO. <laughs> they didn't want to hear any Guess Who. They wanted to hear Backman Turner Overdrive. So we quickly we uh, reversed our whole uh, set list and threw in a whole bunch of songs that, that we didn't usually normally play in our, our show, Rock Is My Life and some of those other uh, uh, songs specifically for the European crowd. So it's fun to see that, I mean, he had these big hits uh, around the world and uh, to be able to, to go out and play some of those um, literally in you know, many, many different countries was just a thrill for me. It's amazing. Randy is is a pretty big guy. He lost a lot of weight about 15 years ago, um, but he's still big boned, I guess you would say. Uh, more than anything, he's got the biggest fingers of any human being I've ever seen. And watching him play jazz on the neck of like a Strat or something, you're amazed that his fingers even fit between the frets. Quite amazing. Um, Randy also showed me, I was at his house one time, and he showed me, <coughs> excuse me, I got a tickle, showed me his collection of Gretsch Country Gentleman guitars. And I believe he's got the biggest collection of them of anybody. He does and he did. Um, when I did my album, which was called Living on Dreams, I recorded at his studio and in the, the bottom of the studio, which was a big barn, uh, he had his entire guitar collection. I think there's 385 uh, Gretsch guitars. Wow. And in between takes and as we were there for a couple of weeks, uh, I helped label and clean some of these guitars and put them in their cases and organize them. Um, but he since has sold them to <clears throat> Gretsch, I think, museum or something like that. But yeah, he was a big collector of, of guitars and not only Gretsch's, but he had Stevie Ray Vaughan's SRV guitar, which is also played on my record, and uh, Hank Marvin's guitar and, and the Monkees original, uh, Mike Nesbitt's guitar. There's There was a lot of them that he had, uh, and you know how it started, and I don't want this whole show to be about Randy. It's it's, uh, but I think it's it's fun stories. Uh, he had his Gretsch guitar stolen. His very first orange Gretsch, the same Gretsch that played Shaken All Over. And uh, that particular guitar, he's always been looking for. So he was continually phoning pawn shops and phoning guitar stores in different towns. Have you seen this? I know exactly what it looks like. It's got a mark here. And through this search, they would say, no, we don't have that one, but we got this one. <laughs> oh, what do you want for it? And, then, and he would get these all at a very, very, uh, at that time, there was no real internet eBay kind of thing to adjust prices. And I think he got them all at a very, very good price. So he did. He he amassed a great collection. And, and that's kind of how it started. But, I had no uh, I idea. That's a great story. People in the uh, the chat are, are asking about, um, is the source code uh, proprietary? Uh, things like that. Well, there is a black box, and yes, Session Wire is a, a peer to peer. It's not similar to some of the other things that are out there. So, um, for more technical information, our founders are, are both on the chat right now Kevin Williams, who uh, used to, uh, he was a co founder of Nimbus, which is one of the big music schools in Vancouver, and uh, Robin Lebo, also founder, and uh, he's the one that came up with this great idea for remote collaboration because they lived remotely on an island, kind of an island, and uh, wanted his sons to be able to connect with other musicians to play. So the whole concept, wow. you know, he came by it honestly, and and uh, Randy and I came in to uh, the Session Wire community just because we were thrilled to be part of something that we knew was, was going to be very valuable to people moving forward. And... Uh, I'm just excited that the 2.0 launch is doing so well and that we're getting some of the biggest producers in the world that are not only using it, but they're promoting it just because they really like it. And um, as people use it more, they're going to figure out more ways to use it. Um, 
you know, use cases uh, as builders, inventors, you, you imagine what you need. And then as more people use it, they come up with ways. That's, of course, what's driving the, uh, you know, some of the, the innovation. So I'm excited to uh, check it out and check out 2.0 as well. Um, did you did I hear you say that you think that you'll have video of Randy and Tal Bachman um, for your presentation for the road rally? You actually using wire, I mean, session wire? Um, the answer is I've asked Randy and he said yes. So Great. depending on schedules and timing and whatnot. So I don't, I never like to make any promises up front on behalf of somebody else that has a busy schedule and has things going on. But uh, the question has been put out there and the answer was yes. So we'll, we'll do what we can to make it happen. Well, once he knows it's me, I'm certain that he'll move everything <laughs> okay. in his life. Well, he said he said to say <laughs> hi to you. Oh, thank you. You know, yeah. it's funny. He and I haven't spoken personally in probably 15 years, but we had a mutual, very close friend named Ralph Murphy from Nashville. Right. Um, Ralph is like not quite old enough to be my dad, but like a big brother to me. And he often stayed at our house whenever he came to L.A., my favorite golf partner, all that. And there would be times where Ralph and I'd be on our way to the golf course and Randy would call him and vice versa. And Randy always said, oh, yeah, tell Michael I said hi. So he Ralph remembers me. And rem he, was, he was our, our uh, pretty much our, our tour guide in Nashville. I mean, every time we went to Nashville, Ralph was the guy that picked us up and drove us around and introduced us to people. And yep, um, he was the mayor of that town. <laughs> Salt of the earth. Yep. Great guy. Great. Uh, I, I met him back in like 1993, I think, uh, at South by Southwest. A mutual friend introduced us, and we've been close friends ever since. Sadly, he passed away a few years ago. And uh, mm -hmm. I always say to my wife, he's the only friend of mine that ever passed away that like once a month, they say, wow, I miss Ralph. And it's been years now, and I still miss him. Good guy. Um, any more questions? We're getting kind of, we got eight minutes left, so we can take a few more. I think what's really interesting is that, uh, you know, for taxi members, um, the ability now to collaborate not only over a distance with people you know, but I, I, I remember reading through some of the listings and sometimes there's things in there that are maybe not quite my genre, but it'd be something that I'd really like to, to test, test the waters, you know, try something. And I think to be able to reach out and find other like-minded people within even the Absolutely. taxi community on Session Wire or others that you could say, hey, you know what, let's collaborate on this for this film. It's not really my kind of music, but let's try and create something together. I know you do this and I do this, and maybe the combination could really result in something you know much different than, than we would do on our own. I think you no can question. agree right now, I, this is what I hear from so many people is that I'm so lonely. I've been working in isolation so much. And this has been a, not just because of the, the pandemic and whatnot, but even before that, so many people, you know, I've got a laptop and I've got recording equipment and whatnot, so I can, you know, do my own records. So then you get into a situation where you're second guessing yourself, is this right? Yeah, should I go to the major or minor or I, I don't know what's good or what isn't anymore. I just I feel isolated. I feel alone. I need I need to share this with somebody. Now you can. I always tell these guys I feel so privileged. I, I sometimes feel like I'm a, a bit of a uh, nostalgia freak, but I started my career at Criteria Studios in the mid 70s and got to work with Carl Richardson, Albie Gluten, Tom Dowd, Arif Martin, Eric Clapton, Crosby, Sills, Nash & Young. The best thing about Criteria was the fact that there were three and then eventually four rooms and now even more under the same roof. But it, it seemed like we all would routinely walk into somebody else's control room and hear a bass part and go, that's amazing, or listen to somebody else's mix. There was so much sharing of information and creativity under the roof. And you're absolutely right. Everybody's isolated now, even pre-COVID, because everybody's got a home studio. And they're usually in a room in the basement or tucked away somewhere in the house where you won't bother the rest of the family. And... and I worry about that. I think that the road rally is a once a year dose of that interaction and creativity, but it's not 
year round. So I hope people learn how to use session wire like that. Um, John Hope wants to know if session wire is a subscription service or a one time download fee. Very good question, John. And it's both. So you only need to download uh, session wire once and then you'll have to restart your computer and that's absolutely free. Um, but if you want to use the high quality audio and the plugins, they get automatically downloaded with the free version. But if you want to unlock them, you can buy what's called a session pass, which is three days of session wire, high quality audio uh, for seven bucks. Or you can do a monthly subscription, same as Zoom, around $14.95, $15. Or you can pay the annual. Most people like myself pay annual because I don't want to have a bill every month. I just want to know what's there when I need it. When inspiration strikes, boom, I just call up the high quality audio plugins and send it to the whoever I'm working with. So it, we've made it very, very easy for people to use however their workflow dictates. So use a session pass, get a subscription. Um, it's all there for you. Thanks for the question, John. There was one more that came up. Um, somebody wanted me to address about the, the webcam. Um, and the guys in the chat, our engineers, are saying, you can always use your phone really easy. Use Epoch Cam to turn your phone into a webcam. And um, don't let that deter you from trying session wire. Um, I saw, uh, here's one from Kip Johnson. Is there some sort of search engine that searches for talent and people that have certain gifts in session wire? Um, and hooks hooks them up to do a session with you, uh, kind of like a phone book or Yellow Pages. Wow, Kip, you must be really old. I haven't heard anybody mention the Yellow Pages in about a decade. <laughs> uh, but you mentioned earlier that you'd be able to search for collaborators within Session Wire. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. Once you set up your profile, like you would do in SoundCloud or in Spotify or any of these different types of things, you put your photo in there or some of your... Uh, audition videos, your music clips, your beats, whatever you want, your bio, uh, hopefully not as long a bio as the one you read yesterday, <laughs> but you put these in and then you can add tags to, you know, if you're a piano player, you say I'm a piano player or a keyboard player, a singer, songwriter. And as you put these tags in, there's a tab in the session wire community called discover. So if you go to the Discover tab, you can either search and say, I'm looking for a bass player, or you can just use the tag. There's a little tag farm in there and click on one of those and you can start to discover people. And as more uh, and more people join, more and more people will be able to decide um, how their profile is, is viewed. Because you can use that link. It's great for artists to be able to publish that link too. It's you can, uh, you know, email it to a producer or somebody and say, hey, go check out my profile. Um, will you have a star rating system on there? So let's say I hire you to do vocals for me and uh, I'm really happy and I give you five stars, as do other people. So if somebody wanted to do a search within Session Wire to find male vocalists that are four stars or above, is that coming down the pike? Yeah, that's coming. And, and one of the things we're doing is we're partnering with other marketplaces. So you mentioned Air Gigs the other day. They're on our list and a few others. So we want to make sure that, you know, we're the connection point. Um, and it's, it's less of a marketplace at the moment, but it, it'll eventually get there. We know that. Um, so, yeah, we're the rating systems are coming as are uh, the ability to have sort of preferences as to who and what can actually access your your uh, information similar to a linkedin kind of thing so that's that's all in the roadmap. but for right now i think you know it's it's the music that we're more interested that people can start yeah. to to create together there's lots of ways of of uh um putting your social stuff out there by the way, this is off topic, but somehow weirdly related. Um, I think I mentioned yesterday we had two listings that came out, I believe Sunday and Monday, looking for uh, people who could sing in Filipino dialect as well as Cambodian, if I remember correctly, for pop and for hip hop. Uh, we've got a TV show that I predict is going to be a hit. It's on a broadcast network, um, which means it's going to pay really well and the back end is going to be really juicy. 
and I've, I've seen the trailers and stuff for the show and it looks really good. Um, so the music supervisor came to us directly, not going through any publishers or music libraries. And one of the many genres that she's looking to build up a catalog so that she can use it throughout the year and all the episodes is for Cambodian and Filipino vocals. Well, I happen to know that one of the guys who did back end programming for our website has a niece who's Filipino who happens to be a great singer. So I called him and said, tell your niece to go on the taxi forum and put herself out there in the collaboration area and maybe in the general hangout. So if any of you have decided to do any pop or hip hop with a female Filipino vocalist, now you know where you can find one. Um, Colin, I really appreciate the fact that you were so patient yesterday with the meltdown, man. That was so embarrassing. And I felt bad because people were really into the show. I'm glad that today the video hung in there, although it started getting a little weird a couple of times. You're a great guest. I'm so excited that you guys at SessionWire is going to be part of the Road Rally because I think it's a perfect fit for our members. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, um, I, I don't want sponsors to, after the Road Rally, be pissed off that they didn't get any bang for their in investment. I'm just not looking for support for Taxi. I'm looking for support for our members from products and services that they can really use to further their careers. That's what we're all about. And Session Wire, I truly believe, is perfect for that. So congratulations to you founder guys who are in the chat room. I look forward to meeting you personally. Um, Colin, thank you for joining us. Um, and uh, I've enjoyed... Uh, uh, and thank you to Bill Threlkeld, because he was the one that put this together and and called me months ago, I think back in maybe April or May, and said, you know, I'm working with some guys that have a product that I think would be great for my fellow taxi members. So, Bill, thank you for that. Um, Thanks, Paul. Yep, uh, absolutely. Shout out to Rick Beaton, the third founder of Session Wire as well. Uh, he's kind of the, the patriarch behind the scenes. He worked on the MP3 back in the day, if you remember that, and uh, so he has uh, credentials a mile long. I won't list them here. You can find those on the website somewhere. But uh, yeah, it's it's great to be working with a team of people that are so passionate, um, not only about technology, but about music and about musicians. Yep. And every day, guys like Kevin are on with A-listers, like big name producers. And I won't say them on the, the YouTube feed right now, but you'll, you'll start to see them sooner or later. Uh, and these people are valuable people. Um, not only customers of ours but they give us really good insight and input and you mentioned the the criteria studios i think one of the things i wanted to share with you is that some of the big studios are now using session wire to connect with other studios so in nashville as you know you'll have a you'll have you know a room b room c room or you'll have some breakout rooms where the grand piano's in one little room with the sliding door and they have a mic and that's the piano room right so what these studios are actually doing is they're actually connecting with studios that are in different cities. And it's like you could be recording in, uh, in Los Angeles or in Muscle Shoals or in Nashville, and it's an extension of your session. And this is just opening up the minds of some of these people to say, this is, this is unbelievable. Never would we th think that we could have ever done that. Here's another great use case for you guys, if you haven't uh, already thought of it or brushed up against it. After I finished all my years of working on records, I, I went to work in a place in New York called Howard Schwartz Recording, better known as HSR, that was the largest audio post facility probably anywhere in the world. And I eventually became studio manager there. And I ran into a voiceover guy whose voice you would instantly recognize, unknown name, but you would recognize his voice on big products like Airlines or Yo Play Yogurt was one of his clients. And he said to me, I've got bad social skills. He did, he, he, he had very bad social skills. And he said, honestly, I really shouldn't be around people in a studio. They want my voice, but they don't want me. And I said, okay, where are we going with this? And he said, I have installed a satellite uplink in my backyard north of San Diego, and I buy 300 hours of satellite time, which in 1981 was very expensive. It was like a thousand bucks an hour to buy a simple satellite uplink. So he asked me to come down to San Diego, which I did from New York, and I checked out his rig and I went, you know, 
we could broker this out to other voiceover announcers and other studios. And because I ran the King of the Hill um, audio post place, I got all the other big audio post places in the United States and then some elsewhere to hook up to this thing. And we would get major actors who were like in Europe shooting a movie, but they needed them to do a voiceover for a product in the States. We would get all the ad agency people to sit in our room while the talent went into a studio in London and did a live voiceover. Session Wire is perfect for that market. Yeah. We have uh, a few voiceover actors uh, working with it right now, and I think you're absolutely right. It'll grow. Um, another thing guys are doing, too, this is kind of cool for those people that have, you know, really valuable outboard gear. Um, people are joining in Session Wire and say, I just did a vocal. I would go on to Session Wire, drag my WAV file vocal, and they would run it through their 1176 or any of their, their processing gear and then drag it back. Mm. Uh, so n now people are, are using their vintage gear and you can start to, the wheels are turning, right? You know, oh, think of what I can do here. And not to mention, <sighs> you know, people doing uh, guitar teaching and, and uh, things like that. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see what your taxi members will be able to do with Session Wire. And, and we have a great support team. You can see they're all on here right now. I've shouted out to Brendan and, and Ross. And, of course, uh, thanks to Bill for putting this together and Kevin Robin um, manning the, the phones there and making <laughs> sure that everybody's uh, connected. So it's, it's a lot of fun, and we welcome all your taxi members. And we don't want to give away too much today because we want you to come back to the road rally and really see hands-on how we can actually do this together and make beautiful music collaborating from wherever you are in the world. Awesome, man. We look forward to having you guys involved at the Road Rally. Um, thanks to Kevin and Bill and whoever else is in the chat from Session Wire. And thank you once again, Colin. This has been great. Um, I will talk to you soon, I'm sure, because we got to get all the scheduling set up for the Road Rally. But been great having you. Take care, everybody. And remember, no quarantini Thursday. Uh, and Monday is a holiday in the States, so there won't be any taxi TV. So we'll be back with you next Tuesday, I believe, a week from today. With that, I bid you a fond farewell. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>